It's been a very stressful season for the Tri-Valley Conference, not only for the athletes, but for the community as a whole. That story continued on January 19th when Eastern's Jace Bullington suffered a concussion that left him unconscious in their basketball game against Alexander. What looked to be like it was going to be an old-fashioned pitcher's duel soon opened up as both the Ohio Bobcats and Bowling Green Falcons were plagued with mistakes. This allowed Ohio to then take over the game and take game one of this four-game series 2-1. to one. For the second straight summer, Bob Wren Stadium will be completely empty after the Southern Ohio Copperheads canceled their season due to COVID-19 concerns. It came down to not only financials, but first and foremost, safety. There's still so much unknown, right? We, we wanted to make the best decision from a safety and financial um, perspective for the organization. The Copperheads plan to stay engaged with fans this summer in hopes of bringing them back next season. It, it, it's everything. I mean, that's the reason why we had to cancel uh, this season is because we were just not sure what our fan engagement could be. We can't have the the fans in the ballpark then you know what why are we having why are we having a season? The Copperheads were also forced to cancel their season last year when coronavirus first started to spread. The organization found new ways to engage with its fans for a virtual summer of fun. One popular idea involved a live stream of the Copperheads in action on the virtual diamond. The digital season, which was which was awesome, um, MLB the show, where you created players based on fans' um, expressions and so forth in terms of people that wanted to, to be named a Copperhead. So that was super exciting. Um, but we wanted to provide that learning experience. Bringing fans back next season is vital to the survival of the Copperheads and other small teams around the county. But the organization says they have faith in themselves and the community. Sitting, sitting on a bench for two seasons, tough, right? So uh, sitting on the sidelines for, for two seasons, um, you could potentially risk people forgetting about the organization. But that's all part of what our initiatives this summer are going to be going into next fall, spring, and again, kicking off next summer with the 20th season. We need to uh, just keep the copperheads in everybody's mind. Uh, as we know, we've got our 20th anniversary season coming up uh, in 2022. So we'll focus on on that, you know, coming back to bring the experience that everybody you know, has come to know and love uh, about the South uh, Southern Ohio Copperheads. Reporting for WOUB, I'm Jack Demler. Welcome back to Newswatch. I'm Jack Demler. The Ohio Bobcats swept the Mac East Volleyball Weekly Awards in the final week of the regular season heading into the conference tournament. After leading the Bobcats to winning their last three games of the regular season, Tia Jimerson has been awarded both Offensive and Defensive Player of the Week. This is her first Offensive and first Defensive Player of the Week award of the season. Coach Dean Webb shared his words of praise for Jimerson on her impact on the team through her career. The end of the regular season can only mean one thing, it's tourney time. After sweeping Northern Illinois as well as winning their last three matches of the regular season, the Ohio Bobcats secured their spot in the MAC tournament. The Bobcats are currently the third seed in the tournament where they will face off with the second seed, the Western Michigan Broncos. That match is scheduled for Friday at 7 p.m. And the winner of that match will go on to face the winner of Bowling Green Falcons and the Miami Red Hawks on Saturday in the MAC Volleyball Championship. And welcome to Newswatch. I'm Jack Demler. Ohio University will host former U.S. Secretary of State and presidential candidate Hillary Clinton in March. The event will be held on March 2nd at 4 p.m. as part of a Women's History Month celebration, according to the Athens Messenger. Clinton will be joined by her daughter, Chelsea Clinton, as part of the virtual fireside chat. There will be no cost to the university or students for the event where those attending will listen to the two discuss their book titled The Book of Gutsy Women, while also discussing female leadership during the 21st century. Clinton served as U.S. Secretary of State from 2009 to 2013 and was a Senator from New York, First Lady of the United States, and First Lady of Arkansas. She ran for president in 2016 but was defeated by Donald Trump. Following every championship, the celebration can sometimes be short-lived as the team begins to focus on the next season. There's a common saying in sports that defense wins championships, and that statement held true on Saturday as the Ohio Bobcats had 17 steals against Miami Redhawks en route to their 84-70 victory. The Bobcats entered the game as a top 50 team in the nation in steals per game, and that aggressiveness was in full effect. 
Gabby Burris started things off defensively as she deflects a pass that was looking to come into the paint. Burris was a big contributor to the defensive side as she deflects this other pass that's coming inside. And whenever Ohio has a great defensive outing, it always translates to the offensive side as well, as the Bobcats had 27 points off turnovers, including this made three from Kate Dennis. And a few plays later, CeCe Hooks would interrupt a pass coming inside and Abby Garnett would secure the steal, which would help set up the offense again, as Jasmine Hale gets the ball under the hoop and she's gonna lay it right up and in. While everybody played a crucial role in the defensive outing, the leader of the ferocious defense was CeCe Hooks. Hooks finished with 10 steals as a part of her historic triple-double. Many of Hooks' points also came off of steals. But here comes the gunslinger, Shanks, looking to keep his team in the game, looking for Zeke Brown, who mosses his defender for the Tiger touchdown. After holding the Falcons scoreless, Tigers have a chance to tie the game. Shanks with a quick screen to Phoenix Wolf, who bolts down the sideline and takes it into the end zone. Game tied at 28, eight minutes left. Ensuing Tiger possession, third and 11. Shanks looking for Wolf, who makes an incredible diving effort to bring in the catch just short of the first down mark. Fourth and six, Shanks looking for Penn Morrison, but the Falcons' Bryce Scout forces the incompletion, and the Falcons take over with five minutes left. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Without a single passing yards, the Falcons stick to the run game and march down the field to get into field goal possession which sets Trevor McGinnis up for this 24-yard field goal for the win. 